And so this video begins in Queens, New York. Welcome to Queens, everyone. We're gonna catch the subway up there, the train, and head into Manhattan. Junction Boulevard Station, heading up. Purple Seven, and a look out to Queens. It's good to be back in New York. It's been a couple years. And we're currently passing Silver Cup Studios where they filmed Highlander 1986. Right in front of that sign is where the final showdown at the end of the movie was. There can be only one Highlander. One of my faves. All right, off at 42nd Street, welcome to Grand Central Station. And you're probably wondering what I'm doing in New York City. Well, as we begin this video, welcome to the filming location to Superman the Movie. Thanks to my friend who I'm about to meet up with. I'm thinking about that. He just dropped a video today of the filming locations that were filmed here in Grand Central Station and Superman the Movie. So go check that out. And we're about to meet up Welcome back to the channel, and welcome if it's your first time. Shall you? Hello there. Out of the woo, Tampa J, yeah. taking Manhattan. What was you saying there? I was gonna say, uh, I don't know what I was gonna say. I was, you said taking Manhattan, I thought of the Muppets. Oh yeah, Muppets take Manhattan. What that... color are their hands now? Oh my gosh, classic. Catch them red-handed. Man, w will we uncover some Muppets filming locations We're gonna during this trip? Look. I don't have any a game plan. We're just gonna walk down the road and see what we can find. So we thought we, first of all, welcome to New York, everyone. We're gonna be here a few days, gonna be hanging out with this guy. Uh, no spoilers. But for today, we're going to do a bit of a walking tour around Manhattan and do show some filming locations. Sounds good, I can use some steps. My favorite movie of all time was filmed here, although I've been to those filming locations before. We might cross back over them. We'll see when we get there. First, this guy wants me to try some coffee right here at the Starbucks, Starbucks Reserve. Reserve. They have the strongest coffee you'll ever have. They have coffee in here they do not have at regular Starbucks. Okay, I used to work at Starbucks. You're gonna, you're gonna be like, time what is ago. this menu that I'm looking at? Something new. All right, there's much ahead. Tampa J, Adam the Woo in New York City. I am a Starbucks Gold member, but wow. Never seen something so fancy. Look at this. Okay, no lie. Took 30 minutes, but we both agree. That's a strong cup of joe right there. Smooth. Was it worth the 30 minutes? No, 100%. Not tomatoes. Oh, a little farmer's market right here on Hudson Street. Also strawberries. Hey, those from Florida. And we're heading to our first filming location. Now this is one I don't really watch or didn't really get into, but it is a famous one right here on Perry Street. And for you Sex in the City fans, Carrie Bradshaw's apartment right here. From that popular cable show. Actually, I think it was HBO, wasn't it? HBO, Sex in the City. Please keep your voices down, respect our neighbors. Okay, so they definitely are embracing that this is a thing going on here. Looks like people taking pictures are asked to donate for a dollar. Ooh, for the doggies. And Adam's gonna donate for us. You get the next one, Jack. There's several people coming by just as we are, checking out the apartment. A lot of people are stopping. Yeah, look at that. Kinda reminds me of uh, South Pasadena. Oh yeah. At the Myers Bush a little bit. Okay, so you Sex in the City fans, just imagine Sarah Jessica Parker walking down the street right here heading to the next filming location oh getting in the way and now crossing at 7th Avenue South look at that view downtown there's the Freedom Tower straight ahead we're heading this way to the next location on the corner of Bedford and Grove Street a little show called friends you may have heard of it this is the building the apartment building for all the friends or at least this is the exterior filming location I wonder what floor they were on. And everyone behind us waiting their turn to get their photo of the Friends apartment. And right across the street from the Friends apartment, we have Ross's building. You think he's home? I don't know, let's go knock on the door. So Joey Chandler and Monica lived across the street at the Friends apartment. Right over there, Ross, 21. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. I'll be there for you. You know, I want to become one of the friends. Do you? 
So I'm going to. Oh, so I have a policy when it comes to sticker slapping. Yeah. I'm not real big on it, except when it's already been blown out considerably, okay. and obviously this is acceptable. But I would never put a sticker Thank randomly. You. It's the same philosophy wall. as a party. You never want to be the first one there. Right. Yeah, same I thing. I like it. When the party is accepted, obviously some of these have been here for a while. These. That's when I throw a sticker up. There you go. I that's like my, it. That's my I, weird policy. I need to get myself a sticker. Chris the girl has a sticker. I need to get a sticker. And just so you can see where that pipe oh. is, right across the street adjacent from the friend's house. All right. On to the next location. Having a good time here in New York. We just got here. We've seen so much. And we're heading to the next location. Some streets are busy and some are not. And now at 10 St. Luke, these steps might look familiar to you. Maybe this house. Welcome to the house from the Cosby Show, the Huxtables. Adam just sat on the staircase here, as you've seen in the show. This was like a dream come true for you. A lover of the Cosby Show, classic, Bill Cosby, which has been in a lot of trouble, did a lot of bad things, so, but I don't know, it's hard to approach it. I don't know what to say, I just know I it was- I have an issue with the shows. Right, there's no uh, issue with the shows. I like Woody Allen movies. Woody Allen, not the best guy. Not the best guy at all. Think of how many musicians and rock stars that are complete scumbags that everyone still listens to their, their music. Yeah. So for me, I can separate the person from the artist. But that's just me. Not everyone can, but I can, for sure. No doubt about it. What a great show. Yeah. And getting to sit on the steps for Adam back there, that's like, that's like a lot of people's like, you know, your favorite movie, you get to go up yeah. and experience it. So, hey, The Cosby Show, iconic. I don't know who's who didn't want that to be your dad back then, you know? Yeah, like, my two favorite TV dads were Cliff Huxtable and Reginald Bell Johnson. Oh, yeah. From Family Matters. Matters. And we're moving over into Tribeca for the next location. Something a little off cuff. Something awesome, though, for today's creature feature. Adam wants to show one of his favorite movie spots, and I, I got I gotta say. It's a good one. I love this town. I can't say that enough. This is my seventh time here in like 10 years, I think. The last time I was here, just briefly on Halloween 2021, I visited the Ghostbusters firehouse, got to see some kids trick or treating. Long story short, I wasn't supposed to be here that day. I was transitioning to Newark to the airport because I got deplaned in Connecticut after visiting the haunting uh, in Connecticut house. I deemed that video it gave me bad juju. It jinxed me. I got all the way on the plane in Hartford, Connecticut, and Is that they're what like, happened today if that's a Starbucks? That's what happened at Starbucks, that's for sure. We've had the worst luck when it goes to going. We had an issue in Portillo's in Chicago. It took them like an hour to make our food. Right, hour to get today, a hot dog. A half Portillo's. hour to make a cup of coffee. Something about when you and I hang out, it just takes longer. Man, I don't know, it's a bad juju or something. That, it's that haunting house you went to. Don't it's the haunting house. That's, that's my point. Back no to that. No more creature features for you. No more creature features. Speaking of creature features, guess where we're going next? Basket case. Yeah. Who remembers that? Nobody, it, just me. Just me us. And you, just you, me and you. And we're passing by the Holland Tunnel right here at Canal Street. I just want to point out the first time I came to New York City, uh, 10 years ago, 2013, I came via the Holland Tunnel. Hey, I'm vlogging here. I want to correct myself. I think the Holland Tunnel goes out and the Lincoln Tunnel comes in. I can't remember. I either came in via the Lincoln Tunnel or the Holland Tunnel. It was a tunnel. The first time I came to New York City, it was through the tunnel and we went straight to the Empire State Building all the way to the Eagle's Nest, all the way to the top. And I always remember this skyscraper, this unique design here in Tribeca. We're getting close to one of my favorite places in all the world. And you might know what that is. Who remembers Basket Case? Such a freaky movie, Belial in the little basket. He was like, uh, he was like an extra born baby, kind of like a, a dead fetus, kind of like from South Park, but he was kept in a basket. And this was the hotel from Basket Case. You said they used a couple buildings for the, uh, for the hotel? The Brosnan Hotel? Two different ones. Two yeah, different ones. The There's the fire escape right there. It was room number seven. Was it the second level? I mean, they just, who you knows? They just made it look set. like it. It was an exterior. This is the exterior filming location. And there's one other location we're gonna go to for basket case, but the sign was hanging. 
he kind of pinpointed it in his video. It was like right there. That's where the the person's falling. And if you pause the screen, if you take a screenshot, you can make out the trim of the building. Basket case. What a freaky movie. It freaked me out when I was a kid. I watched that a little too young as I did most horror movies. Most kids were growing up with Barney and I was growing up with Belial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when we turn the corner up here, in just a few moments, we're gonna be at the Ghostbusters Firehouse. My favorite movie. Back at it again. Just showing you the 4th Precinct Police Station, just a couple blocks away from the firehouse before we get there in Tribeca. Look, they have scooters, NYPD scooters, and a smart car. They've got all sorts of vehicles. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's like the first time every time. I've, I've got goosebumps on my goosebumps right now. They've got the sign out. And, oh, subway right under us. Hook and ladder number eight. That's so iconic looking, man. It is. Wow, man. last time I was here, this building wasn't even here. Yeah, this is new. That's this is newer. Is. That was like a lot. They've refreshed it since the last time you've been here too. They did a restoration back in 2018, 2019. So the last time I was here was briefly on Halloween and I got to see some trick-or-treaters come up to the firehouse. A lot of Ghostbusters came and got candy on Halloween. That was pretty cool to see. And then the time before that, I did a full length video on the Ghostbusters 2 locations. It took me two and a half days. I actually went out to Liberty Island. I was all over New York, but of course I began right here at the Ghostbusters Firehouse. Ever since I was a kid, man. The cartoon, the real Ghostbusters, got me into the movies and the rest was history. This is so cool to be here. I remember the first time I came here was 10 years ago and it just made my whole trip just seeing this. And I, I gotta say, it's, it's happening again. North Moore Street, right here in Tribeca. If you're looking for hook and ladder number eight, is a functioning firehouse. And here you are. This is the first time I've been to the hook and ladder to Ghostbusters HQ with the doors closed. Normally, they're wide open and I've actually got footage of the inside. Spoiler alert, they didn't film the interiors here. They filmed it at Station 23 out in LA on Skid Row, the interiors. But if you were to go inside, you would see the Ghostbusters 2 sign. The screen use sign is hanging in there on the wall currently. And I think I saw Adam go in. Oh look, there's a, another sign here. And we're in the actual fire station. Look at this. Wow, they got the two sign lit up right there. That's amazing. Look at the marshmallows they have state. This is the third time I've been this close to this sign. They've also got a bunch of patches from different ghost heads. No, I thought about it though. They do sell, yeah, they sell t-shirts. Ladder 8. It's got the uh, ghost there with the Halligan. Tribeca. Okay, I'm in the firehouse right now. The gentleman, the firefighter, went to get a shirt for me because I'm gonna buy one of the shirts over here on the wall. And I had to give me a shirt. 20 bucks and it goes to a good cause. Look at that. The ghost with the Halligan there. And there on the sidewalk before the same symbol. Man, I love this place. I love this town! As Winston Stedimore says at the end of the film. The sign in the movie was actually Kind of in a similar area, but it was coming out this way. It was mounted right above this piece, which was not gold back in 84. This was all black. You see where this is gold? That was black and the sign was hanging out right there. I got a shirt, 20 bucks. $20 well Ladder eight. Yeah, of course, souvenir. So I've been- both coughed up 20 bucks today. Okay, so I have a screenshot here that shows a manhole cover and you that see manhole. it a couple times, especially when Walter Peck uh, of the uh, environmental protection comes. There, but this one right there, here is that one right here. So the camera, the angles are really low down. Very, okay. it's a very low and wide lens throughout the movie. Walter Peck, one of the greatest villains of all time. That actor, I, I thought of his name the other day. I always lose his name, but he's also in Die Hard as we were just talking about. I love Die Hard. Uh, also Faulkner from Biodome. Oh, I forgot he was he's in Biodome. Biodome. Bio and I heard, oh, I don't want to give any spoilers about the new movie, which they were just filming out here. Yeah. Uh, Walter Peck. Oh, I kind of already spoiled it. He might be back. That's what I heard. Who also was here? Who's that? Bill Murray? 
Dan Aykroyd, yeah. Harold Ramis, God sure. rest his soul. It's someone not quite as important as them, but yeah, I want to see. I I like the guy. Who's that? Adam the Wolf. Who's that? Who there? So right behind the Ghostbusters firehouse, which is over there, is the Franklin Street Station, the uptown train to the Bronx. This is from a movie, 1990, Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore, Ghost. This is where Sam chases Willie, the person who murdered him, into the subway station. This was the entrance. We're passing by. I love that movie. I plan to come back and sh share some more ghost filming locations, but I have to point that out that Ghost is right behind Ghostbusters. Just a filming location here. Yeah. Yep. Swayze Dog. Swayze Dog. Yeah, Kevin Smith called him that once. Swayze Dog? Yeah, he did the commentary on Roadhouse. They called him the Swayze Dog, so now Patrick Swayze to me is always the Swayze Dog. The Swayze Dog. The Swayze Dog. I also think of Red Dawn, man. Oh, one of the best movies Missed that guy. The best 80s movies ever. Oh no, look away, Chris the girl. Although, you might like this frog. He's very cool. He's got his shades. Look at that. Also, there's a turtle over there with a butterfly just on the steps here in Tribeca. And furthering up Franklin, we're actually heading to another basket case location. All right. I'm Gonna try not to get here. I gotta go out in the street so I can give you the angle of where we're at. 80 Franklin Street. This was the hotel from Basket Case. Okay, we're gonna go to another location and then we're going to get some food. We're thinking legendary Jewish deli, Cat's Deli. Do it. I've been there once before. I'm anxious to try it again. It's been years. Also, it's where they filmed the movie called When Harry Met Sally. Oh yeah. Yes. Am I gonna get that yes. excited? Yes, I think you will. It's pretty good pastrami. I might do that too. Okay. Was she having the pastrami? I don't know if she was, but I, I think I know where she was sitting. She was sitting like in the middle of the restaurant. Watch out, New York. Oh yeah, what's that team that plays here? The Mets. The Mets, right, okay. And we're kind of backtracking a little bit for the next location. This is the first time since I've been here today I've laid eyes upon the Empire State Building right there in Midtown. Oh my gosh. Built with Indiana limestone, if you didn't know. Fun fact there. I've been to the top of that thing. Okay, this next location, 85 Grand Street. I've always wanted to come here. This is one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. We're talking about Tom Hanks. We're talking about big. This is Josh Baskin's apartment building. This is where he had the bunk beds. I got top, and I believe it was, I wanna say maybe in here, right there. They actually filmed there in the movie because they, they show a shot of them looking out the windows. Don't quote me on this, but I think his apartment was right here in the second story. I remember there was kind of like a, a railing along the windows. Could be up there, but I'll, I think it's here, and that's where the bunk beds were. Okay, okay. Oh, Such a classic movie. Okay, we are south of Houston. They call that Soho. Mother Teresa. You know how much that's worth? Mother Teresa? Oh, wait. <laughs> Mona Lisa. At the corner of Houston and Broadway. You can take Broadway all the way to... Ooh, we got a scream. <laughs> I believe you can take Broadway all the way to... Uh, Times Square. And check it out, LL Cool J on the side of the building here. He might be from this neighborhood. Be, yeah, why else would they have this here? I was up in my room. Maybe that was the room. Remember that lyric? Welcome to the Lower East Side and welcome to the legendary Cat's Deli. This will be my second time here. Gonna get a pastrami sandwich, also known for their corned beef and their pickles. Their pickles, their homemade pickles are fantastic. This will be Adam's first time here. Also, when Harry met Sally. Cats, that's all. Like the old neon signs on the window. Best sandwich in town. It's a cool clock there, and it's not accurate. It's, it's beyond one. It's like five o'clock. Look at this awesome neon, though. Look at the Americana. Got an ambulance going. So when you walk in the door, they hand you a ticket and they tell you don't lose it. This is how your order is based off of, this little ticket. 
Are we doing self-service or table service? I think we should do self-service. Yeah, I think self-service might be faster. It looks like the pastrami is a little under 26 bucks. Pastrami, corned beef, turkey, Reuben. So they make all the sandwiches to order. That's why it takes a little bit to get through the line. Ooh, look at that. Give you a little sample. You want to try it? What do you think? Pretty good, huh? And you pay after the fact of this little ticket. It's like a parking ticket almost. Like a... Hi. All right, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Need the ticket? We had to squeeze ourselves in here. A lot of people, busy time to be at Cats. Legendary pickles. I love the pickles here. When Harry met Sally, famous scene here when Meg Ryan starts pounding the table and yells, Yes, yes, yes. This was actually just right behind us in front of where we got the uh, pastrami sandwich. So 25 bucks each. Let's see. Let's see if it's worth it. About a $60 meal. I think Adam's loving it over there. Really good. Really good. Yeah, you, if you think about it, that's a huge hunk of beef right there. That's a lot of meat. If you were to buy that meat in a regular deli, it'd probably be like 25 bucks. Mm. Being the first thing I've eaten all day too, so worth it. Oh man, so good. Absolutely amazing. Gotta come to Cat's Deli. It's worth the price. That is some of the best pastrami I've ever had. And also the best pickles, homemade pickles. So good, these are like half dill and these are like full dill. A lot of famous folks have been in here. Adam Sandler, John Favreau. That's amazing. Oh, rest in peace. Verdine, Anthony Verdine. We've got John C. Riley over here. Also, Roger Moore. I bet I can see the Roger Moore reason. He definitely was a Bond. Yeah, I know you like 007, but I don't, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so, so tired. So <laughs> I've been up a long time. <laughs> oh, uh, Uma. Uma Thurman right there. Yeah. Oh, also Stiller. Ben, ben Stiller. Stiller, Jerry, and that's his mom. Keanu right there. Look who's next to him. Billy Zane. Oh, the Fonz, Winkler. The Fonz, he's our friend. Look at this hacksaw. We Duke. saw him in Orlando. Yeah, Keanu Reeves is right there. Tons of folks eating here, so I'm trying to be courteous as I'm filming the wall. But check out this antique menu there, right before we go to pay. So you you eat, you get everything, and they mark your ticket, and then you come to the cashier before you exit, and you pay right here. That's how it works. You grab your ticket when you walk in the door, and then you pay right here. Attention, please return all tickets used or unused to the cashier guard on your way out. All right, Manhattan, Lower East Side, Cat's Deli. Wow, gosh, what a great day it's been. And the line is down the sidewalk now. Just got here in time, all right. What's next? Crystal Garden right here on the Southeast Side. Look, Chris, the girl, look at the plants. It's kind of cool how they just have them hanging on the front side of the store. The whole facade is all plants, that plant store. And looking over the East River, going up First Avenue, iconic Pepsi sign over there. Look at that. Looking over to Long Island. That's the way I came in earlier, Queens. Buildings everywhere. And the United Nations building. The very first James Bond. The very first scene, the United Nations scene in Live and Let Die. Roger Moore, not Michael Moore. 50 years ago, 1973, the opening shot when the United Kingdom ambassador gets assassinated by the headphones. He was shocked inside the United Nations building. The very first James Bond movie. One of my favorites right here at United Nations. Also, another movie, North by Northwest, Cary Grant, Alfred Hitchcock. In the beginning, you see the United Nations building, which was built in 1948, I think opened in 1952. Very iconic spot, and a live and let die 007 filming location. And the Chrysler Building, which is often confused with the Empire State Building, similar. At one point, it was the tallest building of the world, and then the Empire State Building was built. And I passed through Grand Central earlier, and I mentioned that Adam was just there because he was doing Superman the movie. Filming locations, didn't know we were gonna cross paths again with the Daily Planet. Check out his video. The original 
That's probably the first real big superhero movie. 78, man. 78 yeah. Superman, Christopher Reeves. Still my favorite, favorite superhero movie. The Daily Planet. And it's right across the street from the Chrysler building. And we're walking to another location, just walking beneath the Chrysler building. This is the closest I've ever been to it. Such a beautiful piece of architecture, Art Deco with the giant gargoyles. I think of Batman. Oh yeah, maybe the Dark Knight. Definitely. There's where I came in earlier. Wow, that seems like so long ago. Grand Central Station. I'm also thinking of a scene from Loose Cannons. Gene Hackman and Dan Aykroyd. I think the ultimate, yeah, the end of the movie was in Grand Central Station. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Gremlins. A new batch, Gremlins 2, the Clamp Corporation building. This will be my second time here at 101 Park Avenue. But right there, Zach Galligan and Phoebe Cates walking through the doors. Also, Mr. Butterman and Mrs. Butterman would have went right through here. And we're- My favorite part of that movie is Hogan. Hogan? Yeah, Hogan in the movie theater. Remember the movie theater screen is playing? Oh, yeah, and yeah. Break the, and then Hogan like gets up from the seat and he does the spiel oh, about how they about need to that. get. So if you're looking for the Clamp Building, come to East 40th and Park. Right below the MetLife is Grand Central, a block over there on 42nd, right here is the Clamp Corporation building. I think of that, you remember that like bat that came down and got sucked into the concrete right down on the park, some parking lot somewhere? I don't know if it was physically here, but I just remember that part of the movie. Yep, the Clamp Corporation C right there. Kind of recreating the shot. One more spot. We said this was the last one, but it's not the last one. We're so close. 5th and 42nd Street, the New York Public Library. I've been there several times. I'll go there again. Got to Grand Central right there. Think of Batman Begins, the Batmobile coming down the street here. That is an impressive view right there. Isn't it beautiful? Batman Begins was Burton also, right? No, Batman. Oh, no, that was Batman Returns. Batman Returns. This is the Bateman movies. Or, uh, Gosh, there I go with the names again. Jason Bateman? Not Bateman. Jason Bateman. <laughs> Justine Bateman. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. Batman Begins was... The Nolan movies. I'm thinking of uh, Christian Bale. Bale? Was Batman Begins? Yep, Batman Begins, uh, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. Man, there's a lot of Batmans. A lot of Batmans. The first one's Gotham my City. The first one's my favorite, 89, Michael Keaton. Yeah, that also, was good. Also, Michael Keaton's coming back in The Flash. That's what I heard. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. All right, right here in 40th and 5th, the New York Public Library, where the Ghostbusters movie began. Right across the street there. Actually, the camera was placed this way, looking up at the lion right there. I've been in here, the first time I ever came to New York, it came straight over here, just like the, the Ghostbusters firehouse. I always come by here. Very iconic scene. In the movie, there was an awning right in the middle. At the end, after the get her scene, which was not filmed here, was filmed in LA, the Ghostbusters run right down the steps here and out the way. Correction, West 41st and 5th Avenue. The New York Public Library stretches from 42nd to 40th. Wow, so awesome. So the opening shot of the movie kind of does this. I'm recreating it. It comes down and it shows the, the northernmost lion right there. Kind of does a pan down like that. Yeah. Man, so awesome. My favorite movie. There you go, I brought the movie up. I always have it downloaded on my phone, by the way, it being my favorite movie. There's the lion from the opening scene. And here it is before us today. Yeah, that's so cool. Look at that, Ghostbusters. Yeah, it kind of goes down like this. Do, do, do. I can't do the music. <laughs> Recreate it. And of course you see the Ghostbusters running out later after the get her scene. Right down the middle there. They're running out as they were just scared by the ghost. Something I haven't shown before. Notice the blocks to the right. The flower, that kind of weird square figure there. Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, walking right past it. That's nuts, look at that. We were standing right there. There was an That's awning. Nuts. That's nuts. You want to get nuts? You want to get nuts? I think you did it. Let's get nuts. <laughs> Look at that face. 
<laughs> I'm so scared. Somebody get me the Ghostbusters. Yeah, like Bill Murray or Dan Aykroyd? You, yeah, you kind of look like Bill Murray. A little bit. <laughs> this is a collector's item. It is, right? I should take a photo with it. There it is right there. Yeah, touching this. Adam the Woo's so been here. When you they were filming that, they just filmed it even though there was all the construction going on here. I think so. They just were like, heck it, let's film it. Yeah. All construction out front here. But how many movies were there were just like filmed in public and didn't tell anyone? Yeah. I think Rocky was like that. I think they did that. Yeah. All right, we're walking to the hotel. We're talking about steps right now. I just opened it up. I've done 22.8 today. Got up at 4.30 in Tampa. You're doing more than 20. You're, doing, you're walking a lot of steps out of that. I think I walked off the pastrami sandwich. Yeah, you did good. <laughs> wow. Jay, you're now a part of it. This is beautiful. New York. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. We've That's got, true. You got the it's Chrysler building right there and the Empire State Building to the left. Times Square. Way off, way off, off there. there. You can, we should go over to Times Square at like 3 a.m. and just wander around. I've actually been there at 3 a.m. It's pretty scary. Where, Let's not do that. <laughs> I was wearing a hockey mask too. <laughs> That's, we'll save that story for another time. All right, guys. Are we ending the videos together? I think so. All right, I'm gonna end mine first. Okay, go ahead. All right, that's gonna do it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Let me show you the Empire State Building there as well. Yeah, right there, beautiful. You see the next video, the vlog is over. <laughs> All right, know you're awesome, know you're loved, and no matter who you are, what you're going through, there's always much ahead. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe below. And uh, what a great day here in New York. We've got some big plans next couple of days. So we'll see you all tomorrow. Make sure you check out Adam's video. Also, Chris the girl back in Florida was making a video at Magic Kingdom today. Something very cool. And uh, shout out to her too. Miss you, babe. I'm rambling. All right, it's over. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Man, this is so cool. Look down there. Oh my gosh, the cars are so tiny. Oh, they're teeny. All right, bye-bye. Much ahead.